Abba Yahuwah, I just want to praise and thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you that, wow, as we are going through this heat wave and we experience the heat that is all surrounding us at this point in time, we understand that there is a time of darkness, there is a time of heat, and this is all that we experience. Because when the load shedding comes, the heat is there, there's not a fan, there's not anything. And we have to endure the heat. And so it is when you turn up the heat in our lives, Father. You turn up the heat in our lives so that we may be able to go through this furnace. Because you are right now taking us through the furnace so that we may become purified like gold. Father, you are wanting a people to bring glory and honor to your name. For us to understand that we were not put on this earth for ourselves. We are here as servants in order to be able to bring glory and honor to your name. And Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you for this lesson tonight. I want to thank you for these these lessons through the book of Exodus, where the book of Exodus is really a foundation for us of where there are many, many nuggets of gold, of truth that has been given us for us to be able to walk with you and walk out these lessons that we are supposed to receive from you of what it is that's pleasing to you and yet, so many people do not follow your ways. It's like yesterday when I was discussing with someone and we were sharing. And where we said, but do these people not understand what it means to die to flesh? Why is it that people do not serve the Father with their heart? Because at the end of the day, we've never really been taught what it means to enter a tabernacle. We've never really been taught what it means to have a process of walking through a tabernacle. And the very first piece of furniture that we will encounter in a tabernacle is a brazen altar where we need to understand that we need to become a living sacrifice for you, just as you became a living sacrifice for us. And so tonight, as we are going to look at foundational truths, where we now enter into a time from Exodus chapter 12, where we are now going to enter into foundational truths that you want to lay truths out in our lives to understand that for some of some of us for some people these truths have not been part of their church system because things have been changed things have been tampered with things have been manipulated and there is just been given us a totally different religion but it's time for us now to come to a place of where we start to be those that know the truth and walk in the truth. And so, Abba Father, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you that you will be able to just simplistically open up your word to us, for us to understand the foundations, because what we are working through is the foundations of our faith. And as Yahushua said, if you did not build on the solid foundation, if you're going to build a house on a, 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 not on the rock of a solid foundation, then when the, the rain comes and the storm comes, it's going to be knocked down. But when you have laid your house on a solid foundation, then it doesn't matter the storm that is going to come because the house is going to stand. It's not going to be shaken. And this is unfortunately the time of trial, the time of testing, the time of the purification where many people's faith is going to be shaken. And if they have not learned to be obedient and follow you, 
How are they going to stand in the days ahead? And so I thank you, Abba Yehua, for this Exodus chapter 12, because this is foundational scriptures in our lives. Teachings that come to be able to give us the foundations that we need in order to be able to move in a direction of being obedient, because this is now when the Israelites are now going to have to now, they're going to come and be delivered. And once they are delivered, what is the very first kind of instructions that you want for them? What is it that you are requiring for them? What is it, Father? And so, Abba Father, I just want to thank you that you alone are the one that is going to come and open up the eyes of our understanding, Father. Open up our minds, open up our eyes, that we may be able to see your truths, walk in these truths. And I thank you for revelation tonight. I thank you that tonight you are going to bring revelation in order to be able to come and set us free. So that it's your truth that we may be able to stand on. So that it's your truth that comes to set us free. And so I thank you, Father, that I submit myself to you in this time allowing you to be able to come and speak to my mind and speak through my lips the very oracles that's going to come from your heart. And so I praise and I thank you, Father, that I commit this time to you right now in Yahushua's name. Amen. So as we have already worked through the last 11 chapters of the book of Exodus, and the last couple of chapters, we have been looking at these plagues. And what an in-depth study the Father has given us on these plagues. Such deep understanding, revelation, for us to understand that these plagues are not just plagues that was brought about, but that the Father was very strategically having to be able to deal with every single God of Egypt. And the more we look at these plagues and the more we meditated on these plagues, the more we understand that these plagues are still there plaguing us today. Because these gods of Egypt, they are not dead. And they are still very much part of pagan religion. And they are still very much part of religious systems. But you have... But at the end of the day, these, these things that we have been exposed to is to be able to prepare us because many of these plagues are going to once again present themselves in the days ahead. We are going to see the return of many of these plagues as we have looked at it in the book of Revelation. And so now... As we start chapter 12, we are going to come to a place of where we start understanding about a people that is going to be able to come out of, out of bondage, out of slavery. And now it's a people that are going to have to be told how to follow the Father. And so this is what we must understand. You see, many times we get saved, but what we don't understand is we get saved in order to be able to meet him so that he's the one who now starts to lead. But we have this thing of where we get saved, but yet I still rule my own life and I am there to pray to him and he is there to do what I want. Yet from everything of what we see of when the Father is going to deliver them and when he is going to bring this, this tenth plague that what is it that he's requiring from his people. So on the one side, you're going to have judgment from disobedience 
And on the other side, you're going to have salvation because of obedience. And so we must understand if there was any firstborn child that would have been on the Egyptian camp at the time of when that angel was going to pass. So interesting that, you know, it's like I've got a friend of mine visiting with me at the moment and her and I were chatting and where she actually mentioned something to me that was such a revelation where she said, think about it. You know, the Pharaoh was the one that was in communication with Moses. Moses came before the Pharaoh and said, this is what is going to happen. The firstborn child of every, of all, all the firstborn children in the land of Egypt, of man and beast, is going to die. That's what he said. And we're going to read it again tonight. But now think about it. This is what's being discussed with the Pharaoh. Maybe some of the advisors of the Pharaoh have heard this. And yet they've seen all these plagues take place. Would there have been a talk in the town to say, well, there's a talk of another plague. Or could it have been that they were not even prepared? Now imagine, you don't, you're not even prepared. And all of a sudden in one house, there could be three people that could be wiped out. A mother, a father and a child. And yet, where was the warning to warn them? So we must understand, in the days ahead, it's not to say that there's going to be a warning of the plague. Father might be able to warn his children. There's a protection for those that were in Goshen. There's a protection for those that were in the ark. But there was no protection for those that were outside the ark. And so we must understand there must be the protection that must be there for us. But if you were in the Egyptian camp and you were hanging out with the Egyptians in the Egyptian camp, then you must know that the same judgment that was going to be able to be coming forth that night was going to plague you. And if you were a firstborn child of an Israelite family, but you were visiting a friend because there was no, how were you going to know where you had to be? Yes, the father had told them that they were to be able to get a lamb and that they were to prepare it. But imagine if you had this rebellious child that wanted to visit, maybe there was a girlfriend or something in the town. There would have been no protection for you. If you were in the wrong camp. So it is so important. That we are in the right camp. Because if you find yourself. In the wrong camp. You will be destroyed. Because there was no protection. And this is clearly. What we are going to see tonight. And so there is such foundational. Things that we are going to learn. Tonight. Foundational revelation. That the Father is going to give us tonight. For us to be able to start moving forward. You know because many times we do things because people do things. And we get taught things. But we don't always get a revelation. And even today I got my own revelation today. And I was so excited. <laughs> you know sometimes things are there facing us in the face. But there comes a time. When our eyes are opened and our ears are open and when we truly, it's like when you have to shamar, not shama, shama is to hear. So we've been shamaing, 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 hearing, hearing, hearing. But there comes a time when you need to shamar. And when you shamar is, all, is, is in order to be able to see, it's in order to be able to observe, it's to that is when we really need to be able to see to observe. 
and then the eyes are opened because we watch. So we are going to start reading tonight from Exodus chapter 12 from verses 1 and it says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Mitzrayim saying, Now we are going to start with some very foundational things over here. It says, This new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. Now, I want you to underline that verse in your Bible if it is not underlined. Because this verse in your Bible is one of your foundational key verses to understand the Father's calendar. Because remember, they are now going to be able to come out of Egypt and now they need to be taught. Remember, 400 years they have lived in Egypt, more than 400 years, lived in Egypt, followed the Egyptian ways, followed everything of these Egyptians, but now he is putting down his ways and he's going to start from now on, starting to teach Moses to say, right, up until now, you have done things your way. And that is the revelation that I have understood. Because you see, we get salvation. But then there's got to be an equipping of being able to follow him. There's got to be an instructions to follow him. But you see, we get saved. And it's the thing of now I received salvation. But where is the, the pattern of where now I need to be able to have a pattern in my life? In order to be able to follow the one that I am supposed to follow. Because at the end of the day, I have been in the world. I have been in the world system. I have done things the world's way. And now I'm going to be receiving a salvation. And so if I receive a salvation, that is only the first step. The very first step was salvation. Yeshua was the door. That he opened for us. He was the door that was opened for us. <coughs> so this door was opened. So that was the very first step. Was receiving salvation. But you see. Unfortunately we receive found salvation. But then where is the equipping. And where is the, the next step. That is to be able to take us on that process. And this is what we must understand today. Today we must understand that there is a salvation. And straight after the salvation. There is going to have to be blood death. Laying down of self. Like we are going to see. Tonight, there had to be a, a blood shed. And so we must understand that the pattern is you get saved, but then from there, there's a deliverance that needs to come from the mindset of Egypt. And this is the things that we are going to start understanding and seeing in Exodus chapter 12. Because this is everything of where it starts. So if we start to teach people with the right foundation from the beginning, then that means that we are not going to run around like a chicken without our head, that it's 30 years that we've been saved and 20 years that we've been saved. And yet at the end of the day, we are still not pleasing to the Father because we are still living for ourselves and it's still about us. And there is no pattern in our lives and there is no map in our lives that's giving us foundational pillars that is key to our relationship with the Father in how he wants to be served. And so right in the beginning, he is now going to say to Moses, right Moses, you are now going to have to learn my ways because up until now, you have done it in the world. So from the very first time that we get saved, we are supposed to now come to Exodus chapter 12, coming out of Egypt and saying, okay, what must I learn once I come out of Egypt? What must I learn once I give my life? What must I learn? Because there's things I have to learn. Now, I've been living in this world and I've obeyed this world system. And I've been part of this world system. But now I'm coming into another kingdom. 
And this kingdom has another way. This kingdom has other laws. Just like it's going to be with these Israelites. They have been as slaves in Mitzrayim. And that is why I hate to say it, but there are many people that have given their life to Yeshua, that have given their life to Jesus Christ, and yet at the end of the day, they are still slaves in Egypt. Because they've never come to be able to receive the patterns of the Father's ways, of His kingdom ways, to teach you His kingdom ways for you to be able to walk out his ways to prepare you not for heaven you see church is trying to prepare us for heaven it's all about the fact receive jesus because when you die you're going to go to heaven that is not the purpose the purpose is to raise up a army of people a company of people a bride that is preparing herself for her groom now, if you are not a bride preparing yourself for her groom, then what are you? And so a bride takes on the identity and the makeup of her bridegroom. So the father is now going to deliver his people who have been totally lost out of his, out of his way, out of the ways that he gave them. More than 400 years ago. And now he's going to have to start bringing them back to scratch. But how many of us get saved and then immediately get taught that we are supposed to learn to die to ourselves and follow him. Because he is the shepherd that we need to follow. No, no. We get saved and then we start coming into a church and learning what are we learning are we learning what we need to learn in order to be discipled in order to be prepared for what the world for a no not for this world but for a kingdom for his kingdom and to make a difference in this world to be able to reveal him to a people so that is why we start with the very second verse where the father is now going to say to Moses, listen, up until now you were living in Egypt, they have their calendar. And they follow their calendar and they follow the gods of their calendar. But I'm going to tell you, you will have my calendar from now on. So how many people are living according to a Gregorian calendar? Because this is the calendar that has been given us and now they saved. They are saved in a church and they don't even know when the Father's new year begins. Because why? Because we just follow what man says. So Gregorian calendar is there. Yes, we're living in this world and this is the calendar that we have got. It's what, it's what is there. But this is not our calendar. We live in the world but we are not of this world. So I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Because even though I'm in this calendar, I'm still not, this is not my calendar of when my father is going to put his purposes and plans in place. I have to know his calendar and how he wants to be served on his calendar. But where do we get taught that? Certainly not at church. Certainly not at church. And then, if you like me, I came into this walk of understanding a way of coming back to the Father, but then I got given Jewish ways. And then learned a calendar of the Jewish people. But at the end of the day, again, I'm starting to grab onto man's calendar again and still not coming back to what it says in the Bible. And so we need to come to the place of having to get back to the truth of what it says in the Bible. So now we're going to break this down. And he says, this new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. It is the first new moon of the year for you. So understand, he's telling Moses, take note, Moses. First of all, you're going to need to look at a new moon. It's about a new moon. So what does this new moon mean? 
Because this new moon is going to be the first new moon of many more new moons that's then going to make up a year. And this is how you are going to have to serve me. Because on this first new moon, I am going to start giving you your instructions of how you are to serve me. So imagine, imagine if people come out of the darkness kingdom, they come out of Mitzrayim, and the first thing that they're going to learn is that you have got a calendar that's not your calendar and this world's calendar, but we are now going to return back to the calendar that was given to us from the creation. Imagine that. And then when we start to please him in how he wants to be served, in the calendar that he wants you to keep, then we can start progressing in our relationship with him and not have to keep running every, to and fro and to and fro to find him because when we knock, the door is opened. When we seek, we will find. If we seek him with our whole heart, he will reveal himself to us. So I had a look. Father started to say to me, break this down because here I am now. I'm not, I'm not in the Cape right now. I'm here in Johannesburg. I don't have all my books with me. And so the, I have all this, this chapter's teaching when I teach on feasts. This is the chapter. And now I don't have that book with me. So now I have to start from scratch. But I thank the Father that I had to start from scratch because he wanted to open up my eyes of understanding. So, we go look at that word new moon. That word new moon is the concordance reference 8 H2320. Sure, turn it around and then it's almost like 2023, but it's 2320. So it's H2320. And it's Kadosh, Kodesh, Kodesh. It's the word Kodesh. Now the word Kodesh is the word for new moon. It's the word for month. It's the word for first day of the month. And it's the word for lunar month. Let's get it straight. It's the word for lunar month. Which means a month is not going to start with the sun. A month is not going to start how you want it to start because you've calculated it according to whatever you wanted to calculate it. According to a sun, it is a lunar month. And that is according to the word Kodesh. So if you are following a sun calendar because you're following a calendar that you went and got that is called an Enoch calendar, you are standing against what this Bible says because this Bible says that a new moon is a lunar month. You have to do the month according to the moon and not according to the sun. So then the father said, go a little bit deeper. Now, if you take the root word of Kodesh is the word Chadash. And the word Chadash, so the word Chodesh comes from the word Chadash, which is the original word, and that is H2318. That's the root word that Kodesh comes from, is coming from Chadash. And that means, now listen carefully, so that we stop our arguing. You know, it's like I said, you know, the Father, in His wisdom, will always bring truth so that at the end of the day, when there is disputes and arguments amongst the people, that we can finally get back. So when people say to me, ah, there's so many discrepancies in the calendar, I say, you know what? The Father is not going to have discrepancies in the calendar if he's put the truth in his word, and if the truth is in his word, there should be no discrepancies because we are those children that need to come back to truth. So if you seek, 
you will find if you knock the door will be open. But if you're just going to lead, be led by man and what man's going to tell you, then he's going to let you go ahead because if that's what you want to follow, follow. But I tell you now, he will have a set apart people that will get it right according to what he has written in his word. And that is why I'm saying the calendar is one of the biggest discrepancies that there is and it's only because man wants to come up with their own reasoning mind and make their own their own cleverness on this calendar. But if we get back to the origin of what is written in the word, there is no confusion. And this is what he showed me today. And I thank him for his revelation today because he, got, he opened my eyes to, in order to be able to shamar and to, for me to, to truly watch, to truly observe, to truly look deep so that I can keep what he's saying. Now listen to what this says. Chadash, H2318, is the root word that Kodesh comes from. And it means to be new, to renew, to repair, to make new, to renew itself, to renew, to rebuild. So understand, this new moon is going to do what? It's going to renew itself. It's going to repair itself. It's going to make new. It's going to make itself to renew and to build. So understand mm. something. There is no confusion because it cannot be a full moon. A full moon is already fully repaired. A full moon is already fully renewed. A full moon is already, so there's a bunch of people and I was so disappointed because yesterday I was listening to a teaching that I really respect this man and I think he's got excellent teachings in especially opening up certain things and this man was talking about, you know, you know, also about the calendar and the next minute he starts to say the month begins at the, at the, at the full moon and I thought, what? Oh, father. Now there's more confusion. And that's why yesterday I was thinking, how does this man come to this revelation, my father? And I know because I have another friend of mine that it's the same thing. This is what she's, she's, she believes. And she's got a whole group of people that come together and they, they follow the new moon at the full moon. And so I say, if we just get back to the word, then we will stop our arguing. We will stop our confusion. And we will come back to the truth because we are doing these teachings now in order for us to be able to lay foundation because this is the manner that the father is giving us from heaven in order for us to be able to be disciples, to be discipled into truth. This is not my truth. This is not your truth. This is the truth of the word. That's the final authority. So if we, you, if, if a person is still going to want to argue after they have gone and looked at the word and the word is speaking, then we, why are we still arguing? Then leave the person, let them carry on with what they want to follow, but you be obedient to what the father says. So if he says that a new moon is the new month, it's a month. The new moon is a new month. It's the first day of the month. And it's a lunar month. That is what Kodesh is. So understand, the month starts with the moon. And what moon is it? It's a moon that is Kadash. Kadash. That is. It renews itself to be, re to be new, to renew, to repair, to make new, to renew itself, to renew and to build, to rebuild, which means... It's not a dark moon. It's not a dark moon. Because a dark moon is no moon. A dark moon, you don't see a moon. So how is it repairing itself? How is it making you? How is it renew? You? you cannot see it. Now, do you know how amazing it is? Now, let me tell you how amazing it is. Look at how amazing this is. Today is the first day of the new moon that we, we saw yesterday. So yesterday, we saw the new moon. Now, by this time tonight, we've entered, entered into the second day. But yesterday, last night, was the first day 
of the 11th month of a new month according to the Father's calendar. The first day of the 11th month of a new month. Because why? The moon slither was in the sky. A little slither. Then we say, yeah, but how do you know it's not supposed to be a dark moon? How do you know that you are supposed to see this moon? Let's go and read. In Deuteronomy chapter 16 verses 1. We're going a little bit ahead. But... I want to lay a foundation here because we are going to many times have to speak about new moon so that we may understand before we even going to get to Deuteronomy, we're going to have to work through Exodus. We're going to have to work through Leviticus. We're going to have to work through numbers. We're going to have to work through these times where it's going to be talking about a month. And so you're going to need to understand how does a month start? When does a month start? We are going to need to understand these things because we must understand that scripture is exactly what the father has given us to go by. And so we cannot turn around and say, well, a new moon is now the new moon because Israel has, has told us that um, we've got a, a, a calculated calendar that they brought out in October or September. And now this calculated calendar that came out in October or November has come out. And now we have, we, this is now the new month, according to my calendar that I've already got that was printed for me last year. So now last year, uh, September, I got this new calendar so that now my calendar is going to be according to what's already set out for me. So don't worry that I don't need to observe anything in the sky. But we learned in Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 that it says that we are to be able, he's put sun, moon and stars in the heavens for appointed times and seasons. For his appointed times and seasons, which means it's for him to be able to want to do his appointed festivals and his feasts at those appointed times. And he put the sun, moon and the stars in the heavens for that very purpose. To understand. But now people will discard that. What is already given us in the creation calendar. And now we will go and make our own calendar. And it's a Gregorian calendar or a Jewish calendar. And now we put our own dates there of when we will serve him on his, for his feasts. For his appointed times. When he's clearly told Moses. That this is the beginning of years, beginning of months, beginning of years of, let, we, we read it again, let us read it again. And it says, the new moon is the beginning of new moons for you. So it's the beginning of months for you. And it is the first new moon of the year for you. So this is the beginning of the new year. So if someone is going to come to you and say to you that now we are going to be in September when the Jewish people are saying it's the new year, then I want to say to you that that is not correct. Because here is the scripture that tells us when the year begins. The year doesn't begin at another time of the year. The year begins when he says it's going to begin. And when does it begin? It begins when they came out of Egypt. Which is in the spring time, not in the autumn time. And these are the things that the Father wants us to be able to understand that this is the foundations that we need to have so that we can all get onto the same page, so that we can all start to serve Him, the one who created the very sun, moon, and stars in the heavens, the one who created the very Feasts that he wants us to keep and the days that he wants us to keep and we will do it the way he wants and not what we want to do because there is a pattern that is laying out for us once there's been salvation. There is a pattern and the pattern is now you do things my way. You have lived, you have lived in the world. You have been in Egypt. You have served the Egyptian gods. You have gone and done things according to the Egyptian ways. Now I'm going to teach you my way that's the bottom line it's my way and so now we look at this word and we look at Deuteronomy chapter 16 now listen to what he says Deuteronomy chapter 16 from verse 1 says God the new moon of Aviv okay what is Aviv Aviv is 
the spring time. It's the time of the spring time. It's the time of when they are going to come out of Egypt is going to be at this time of Aviv. It's going to be the spring time. And perform the Pesach to Yahuwah, your Elua, for in the new moon of Aviv. Aviv is not just the springtime, it's also got to do with the ripening of the barley harvest. So this is at the time when you're going to get barley and it's going to be when the barley is going to be ripe because remember everything about the Father's got to do with offerings and this is going to be part of the offering that you're going to be able to bring him. So he says, guard the new moon of Aviv and perform the Pesach, the Passover, to Yahuwah, your Elua, for in the new moon of Aviv, Yahuwah, your Elua, brought you out of Mitraim by night. So God, this moon of Aviv, because in this time, he brought you out of Mitraim by night. So you see, this which he's about to do now in Egypt is going to become an example. It's going to become an example. And from now on, he's going to want you to be able to keep this as a remembrance. But it's going to be for a reason, because at a later stage, it's going to be a fulfillment of what he was doing in this time. So now we have a look and he says, we go look at this word, God, the new moon of Aviv. So the new moon of Aviv is the exact new moon that he's talking to Moses about. He's saying, this is the first, this is the new moon of the first month. So this is the moon of Aviv and you've got to perform the Passover. So we are about to go and observe this new moon because after this you're going to perform a Passover and that's why I'm going to show you this moon. And he turns around and he says, God the new moon. So when you look at that word God, that is the word H8104, which means Shamar. Shamar. This means to keep God, observe, give heed to God, to watch and protect, watch, it's the watchman, it's watch for, it's wait for, it's to watch, it's to observe, it's to keep, it's observe, it's celebrate, it's to preserve, it's look narrowly, it's observe, it's wait and it's watch, that's why you've got to watch for a new moon, because something is happening in the heavens. Something is happening in the heavens that is going to bring a birthing of something that is Kadash, that's going to repair itself, that's going to make new, that's going to renew, that's going to rebuild because the moon builds itself. Now you're going to watch for the small little slither that's going to be the beginning of the rebuilding of the moon. You understand? Wow, do you see how it's all coming together? And now you are a watchman to to observe this. You are going to wait for it. You are going to you are going to look narrowly because you're going to have to look for this moon. You are going to have to wait. You are going to have to watch. You are going to have to observe. And then you need to guard. You need to keep and then you need to celebrate it. That's all this word God, which is the word shamar. So now, I ask you, how are people now keeping a calendar that they don't guard, observe, watch, look narrowly, wait for the Kadash of the new moon, which is going to be when it's repairing, when it's renewing, when it's becoming repaired, when it's becoming new. What are they doing? Then whose calendar are they observing? Their own? You know, the father is very specific here to Moshe. Now, we cannot say that we are going to follow what the Father says and yet still do it our way. No, if we're going to follow what the Father says, then we're going to come back to the Father's way. And if you go back and you look at these words, then you understand what the Father is saying. And this is why we've got so much confusion in the body of Messiah right now, in the fact that we are on different calendars because nobody is willing to go back to the truth of what the word says so that we can get it right.
But you see, Father is not confused because if he said, I put sun, moon and stars in the heavens for your appointed times, then you must understand that that is what he said he will do. And so if we look at Psalm 104, 19, just in case you say, but who says it's the moon that's going to establish when the, when the month is going to be and when the feasts are going to be? So let's go look at Psalm 104. So we go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104.19, he says, he made the moon for appointed times. He made the moon for appointed times, which is the same word. Look there, he says, he made the moon for appointed times and the sun knows it's going down. So if you go look at um, Genesis chapter 1 verses 14, it says, And Elua said, Let the lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens and separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and appointed times for days and years. Now that word appointed times means Moedim, which is his appointed times of when he's going to want you to be able to have celebrations for him. Now he says he made the moon for those appointed times. He made the moon for the appointed times. That's why the month is established by the moon. Because on the month of the new, on this new moon, you are going to have to know when this new moon of the first month is. So that you can start to count your days in order to keep a feast that's for him. And that is now what we are going to look at as we continue to read our scriptures from verses three. Now he says, so we've covered this now in detail I've covered this in detail for you to understand that there is a way that seems right unto man but its way will end to death because we've got to come back to the revelation of the truth so if you are listening to this teaching and you have never known that there was another calendar and all you've done is you've kept this Gregorian calendar this is for as far as you concerned you are now starting in January the first of January was the first of this new year it's the new year of this Gregorian calendar but it's not the new year of the father's calendar because the father's calendar is spoken clearly here that he says it's on the new moon is the beginning of the new moons for you if it is the first new moon of the year for you and you are going to understand when the season is of this new moon so that we are not going to be confused in what he wants so now he says speak to all the congregation of Israel saying on the 10th day of this new moon each one of them is to take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father a lamb for a household so now they are being told, right, on the 10th day. So understand, you have to know when is the first day of this new month. You can't just uh, guess, suck it out of your thumb or turn around and say, okay, let's go in and, and do this is the 10th day, but we're going to be able to do it now because someone told me that I'm to keep this Enoch calendar. So now I go according to the sun and I've got my whole calculation of my calendar calculated. Others have told me I've got a Jewish calendar that actually started in September, October. So now that was the beginning of my months there. And now all of a sudden, yes, April or March, and now this is the new moon not that they say anything about it being the new moon. They might say the word Rosh Kadesh, which is the head of the month. It's the beginning of the month. So they will tell you that it's that, but they haven't gone and actually physically looked at the moon to know that it's that. They just go according to a dark moon. And they've calculated their, calcul they've calculated their calendar. And now they tell you that this is the 10th day, when you're going to go fetch your lamb, and then on the 14th day, you're going to be able to slaughter your lamb. So this is what they're going to tell you. But at the end of the day, you must understand, this is what they're telling you. But you must understand something, that at the same time, <laughs> this is a calculated calendar. Now you are going to have to do this according to what the Father wants you to do. 
And what is it that the father is telling you to do? So now he's going to be able to say, right, now, on the 10th day. So now, he's not telling you that you are going to be able to do it whenever you want. He's telling you exactly, this is when the month starts. And the month starts by it being able to be the first day of the month, which is a lunar calendar. It is when the, the you're going to have to look at the slither because this is when it repairs itself. This is when it makes new. That is when it is renewed. This is when it rebuilds. And you are going to have to go and observe it. You are going to have to guard it, which means you are going to have to shamar, which means you are going to have to observe. You are going to have to to watch for it, you are going to be able to wait for it, you are going to look narrowly, you are going to wait, you are going to celebrate, you are going to keep, you are going to observe. And this is what you're going to have to do. So at the end of the day, understand, this is is telling you clearly how he wants you to be able to do this. Now you come to the 10th day. Now he's going to collect the lamb. Now, Everything of what I'm going to share with you now is basically what our Messiah, this is what we are going to speak about the Passover. We're going to speak about the Passover where our Messiah became the Passover lamb. Now, at some churches, we hear about Palm Sunday. When all of a sudden you bring the palms to church because... This is the Palm Sunday, which would be the Sunday before he's going to be able to then um, die and resurrect. So they do the Palm Sunday on the Sunday. And then the Friday, according to the church system, he died. They say he died on a good Friday and resurrected on a Sunday. But if you do your calculation, there's nowhere in that calculation of yours that he was in the grave three days and three nights. Nowhere in that calculation do you have that. Nowhere in that calculation. So if you believe that he died on a Friday and resurrected on a Sunday, then you need to be like my child was with me. When he was 11 years old, my Justin came to me and said to me, Mom, just explain to me, if, if Jesus died on a Friday and resurrected on a Sunday, how is that three days and three nights? Because my child was quite intelligent with maths. And he was doing his math sums. And I said, Justin, you don't ask questions like that. That's just the way that it is. And you see, this is the thing. What we don't understand is that the the child could do maths. And the child was in a Christian school. And the child is being told certain things that he's questioning because he's he's read another scripture that says as it was with with um with uh, 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 Jonah three days and three nights in the belly of the whale so shall it be with the son of man and so then he was doing his calculations and it didn't add up for him but you see children will ask us questions but we do not want to go there and say no 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 you don't ask questions like that it's just the way that it is so if you actually If you actually turn around and you do the calculation that they celebrated on the Palm Sunday, he would have actually died. He actually died on a, on a Wednesday, on a Wednesday afternoon, three o'clock on a Wednesday. And he resurrected at the close of Shabbat on a Saturday. But we will get more into that once we get to Leviticus, once we get a little bit deeper into the teaching, we will understand that right now we are building a foundation. So if we go look, now he's telling you that he wants you to be able to go take a lamb and you are going to take it on the 10th day. And then this lamb is going to stay in your house because then he says, and if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of his beans. According to each man's need, you make your, your count for the lamb. The lamb be a perfect one year old, one year old male. So understand, we always see this little lamb, meh, you know, a little lamb. It was one year old. A little lamb, one year old is not a little lamb. It is already becoming a ram. It's called a lamb, but it's one years old. One years old is not a little baby lamb. So a little baby lamb, when you see a little baby lamb, that is not the right representation of what it was. It was a one-year-old lamb. 
And so it says, and take from the sheep or from the goats. And so he says, and you keep it until the 14th day. So you're going to have to keep it for four days. So for four days, you are going to be able to inspect this lamb. You are going to be able to look at this lamb. You are going to be able to inspect this lamb for four days. You're going to inspect the lamb. So if we're now going to look at Mark chapter 11, because remember, Yeshua is the one that became the perfect lamb. Everything about what's coming out of them, coming out of the land of Egypt, when they are going to be delivered out of the land of Egypt, everything about this deliverance out of the land of Egypt is going to be the fact that they are going to be able to be a, an enactment of what was going to finally be Yeshua, going to be the lamb that is going to shed his blood for us to be able to be redeemed and set free, so that we do not have to die by the angel of death, but because of the, the blood of Yeshua being upon the, our, the lentils of our hearts, we are then delivered by the, the lamb that was slain for us. So, now we go read in... Um, we're going to go read in Mark chapter 11. So let's go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. So in Mark chapter 11, and we are going to read from verses 1. And it says, And when they came near Jerusalem, in Beit Fag Fagi, and Beit Anya, at the Mount of Olives, he sent out two of his taught ones and said to them, Go into the village opposite you. And immediately entering into it, you shall find a colt tied on which one has that one has sat, that no one has sat. Loosen it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Says the master. The, say the master needs it and shall send it back straight away. So they went away and found the colt by the door outside on the street, and they loosened it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing loosening the colt? And they said to them, As Yeshua has said, so let them go. Now listen. And they brought the colt to Yeshua, and they threw their garments on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their garments on the way, and others were cutting down branches from the trees and were spreading them on the way. And those going before and those following cried out, saying, Hoshiana, blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. Blessed is the coming reign of our father David in the name of Yahuwah. Hoshiana in the highest. And Yahshua went into Jerusalem and into the set-apart place. And having looked around on all, he went out to Bethania, Beth, Bethania, Bethania with the twelve as the hour was already late. And so this actually happens. If you really go and you start to study the scripture, this happens on the tenth day when the lamb is chosen they chose the lamb they hailed him they said blessed is he coming in the name of Yahuwah they were hailing him as king they went and they laid out the palm trees they chose the lamb and then the lamb was going to be inspected and so when we continue to look in Exodus now and it says then and you shall keep it from verses 6, and you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same new moon. Then all the assembly of the congregation of Israel shall slay it between the evenings, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lentil of the houses where they ate it. So understand, on the 10th day, they choose the lamb. On the 14th day, the lamb is to be slain between the evenings. So understand something. This is something that we are now going to look at next week. We are going to start looking in detail into this. So we are going to have to understand that what is being presented to us here in Exodus chapter 12 is what we understand what our Messiah has had to go through. Our Messiah was chosen, hailed as king. Hoshiana in the highest. They're hailing him as king. They 
they're exalting him. They're telling him that he is the king. He is Hoshiana in the highest. He was, and they put out, um, you know, they, they put out palm trees, palm branches for him. And he walked on the donkey and they were hailing him as the king. But by the 14th day, he was going to be inspected. He was going to be inspected. And that is why Pontius Pilate had to sit and wash his hands and said, I find nothing on, on him. Because the lamb is inspected for four days. On the 10th day, the lamb is chosen. But on the 14th day, the lamb is then going to be slaughtered. On the 10th day, Yeshua was hailed as king. On the 14th day, between the evenings, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, between the evenings, the evenings is when it is still dusk. We understand evening differently because we are going to see. Then that night, when he says the night, the night is already when the new day begins. And that is what we're going to look at then next week when we are going to see, as we are going to understand this one-year-old lamb that has now stayed with them in their house. Understand, they became accustomed to the lamb. They had to take the lamb. They had to take it into their house. And it says, on the tenth day of this new moon, each one of them is to take for himself a lamb according to the house of the father and the lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the beings, according to each man. Need you make your count for the lamb? So whether the lamb is in the house or whether the lamb is in the garden, and the lamb is there and the lamb is now part of them for four days they are going to keep this lamb with them now for four days the lamb cannot be able to be they got to go choose this lamb and they got to bring the lamb and the lamb is going to be part of them now for four days and they are going to have to inspect this lamb and as they're going to inspect this lamb then they are going to have to, from there, get to the place of when they're finally going to then be able to slaughter the lamb. And then they're going to be able to have the Passover. So, and this is done between the evenings. So, we are going to look at the next week as we continue. We are going to be able to then look at when the lamb is now going to be slaughtered. So that they can take the blood, put it on the lentils of the doorposts. So that then they are not going to have to come under the plague of the death. And so when we understand Exodus chapter 12, then we understand what our Messiah has done for us. So imagine we get saved and straight after we get saved, we need to start to understand a calendar so that when we understand a calendar, we can then understand what our Messiah has done for us on the 10th day, on the 14th day, on the Father's calendar, so that we can then start to celebrate a feast for the Father. Because because remember what he said, let my people go so that they can go and celebrate a feast for me. That's what the father kept telling them. Let my people go so that they can then go and celebrate a feast for me. And now this is now when he's going to start to prepare them. So you see, if we were supposed to give, we if we started to give the people the right um, the right map that they are supposed to follow, the correct foundations from the time they come out of Egypt, then I don't think we will be as confused as what we are today because we would understand instructions in a different way because now he is going to start to instruct them on how he wants to be served. Because this is instructions that is giving them on what they need to do in order for them to be able to be protected. But eventually it's going to become a feast as we will read by next week. This is going to become a festival that is going to be celebrated. That is a law for an everlasting law for them. And this is what we're going to understand. So let us pray. Abba Yahuwah. I just want to praise and I just want to thank you. I thank you for this day, my Father. I thank you for this revelation that you are teaching us. And where you are giving us foundational understanding 
of when we start to be able to speak to people and bring people into the kingdom, where do we start? We have to start by understanding a calendar. We have to start by understanding that a calendar is important because at the end of the day, we have to start to celebrate feasts because that's what you want, your feasts. And we are to understand your calendar because everything with your feasts has to do with your offerings where we are to be able to worship you according to how you want to be worshipped, not according to how we want to worship you. But we have made our own kind of religious systems in how we worship you. But yet we are not coming back to the truths of your word. And so Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you that you alone are the one that is opening up your word to us, my Father, so that we may have the revelation and the understanding of what is important to you and how you want to be served. And Abba Yahuwah, tonight I just want to stand in repentance and I want to ask you to please forgive us, Father. Forgive us for our divisions amongst each other because of a calendar that we are not willing to truly seek you to know what is pleasing to you and how to really keep your calendar. And therefore, we have done our own thing. And so for that, I ask you to please forgive us, my Father. But I thank you, Father, that now is the time of the revelation of the knowledge of the truth so that we can finally come and keep your calendar your way. And so I praise and I thank you for this teaching. I thank you for giving us Yahushua, the, the author and the finisher of our faith, and for us to understand that he was the perfect lamb that was slain for us, for our deliverance, so that you could deliver us out of our worldly systems of the world and so that we may be able to be children of a new kingdom and a new order of how we need to be able to walk before you. I praise and I thank you for this in Yeshua's name. Amen.